Hey there. In this video we are going to look at how you can use the cosine law to find a missing angle in any triangle if you're given all three of the side lengths. Let's do that right now. Alright, so if we're going to use the cosine law to find an angle here, uh, since the cosine law involves three sides and one angle, and if it's the angle we're finding, we need to have three sides of a triangle given. Cosine law allows you to use three sides to find an angle. So you can approach this two ways. One way is to use kind of the standard way you see the cosine law written, and then just realize that this is what you're solving for the angle there and work backwards to solve it. Or some people would just take this formula and rearrange it and isolate it for that first and then use that formula once you've already isolated. So first I'm going to do this where I'm going to substitute the numbers and then isolate that C. If we say that this is the angle we're finding, this angle right here, if that's angle C, so that's that, then the side I put over here has to be the one across from it. Okay, the side over there has to be the one across from it. So this is going to be 5 squared equals 8 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 8 times 9 times cosine of C. And I'm going to try and again isolate this first and then I'm going to use cos inverse to find that missing angle. So again, I can simplify this a little bit, hopefully without my calculator here sometimes, depending on what these are. Uh, we'll do that. Uh, we'll multiply all of that stuff out, and we're going to get that this is 144 cos C. We can even combine a few things together here. Uh, we could make this 145 minus 144 cosine of C of the 25 over there. Now if this is what we're isolating, we need to find a way to get that by itself. You can, to get that by itself, one thing you could do is subtract 145 on both sides, that would be over there. Or you could add this on both sides or move it to the other side and make it positive. Just to keep this simple here, what I'm going to do is subtract 145 on both sides. I'm going to get negative 120 over here. I'm going to get negative 144 cosine of C. It's important to keep track of those negatives so that we get the right angle here. What you can't do is think, wow, there's 145 minus 144. I better subtract that first because, again, we have order of operations here. This is a subtraction, but in here, this is actually a multiplication even though it's not written there. So you need to realize that that multiplication has to happen first. So I can't subtract those, those other ones. If, if I have both of those negative and I want to get this cosine of C by itself, I am going to divide both sides by negative 144. If you want to actually write it down, you can. Negative 144 and cross this off. If you don't want to write all of that down, which it's fine not to because it kind of keeps it actually cleaner, you can just write the result of what you'd have. Once you have done that, you end up with negative 120 over negative 144 or you could certainly simplify that the two negatives are going to be a positive so you're going to have I'll just leave it as 120 over 144 for now I won't actually divide out what that is because then I can leave this as an equal sign instead of approximately but that's what cosine of C is and just like when you find an angle with the sine law now what you're going to do is you're going to use the inverse trig function to find the value so I'm going to go over here with this. I'm going to say that if cosine of C is that, then C is cos inverse of 120 over 144. And we'll go to our calculator. OK, we'll make sure it's in degree mode. It is. And we will maybe put that over there. We want to do now cos. We do not want to do cos. We actually want to do cos inverse above that. The inverse cos function that takes a ratio like 120 divided by 144 and it gives you an angle like 33.6 if you round that off or 34 degrees roughly. So I'm going to say C is roughly 
34 degrees. All right. So just like before, uh, take your formula and set it up with the values in it and then isolate what you're looking for, which is that angle. But as I said earlier, some people like to take the approach of rearranging the formula first before substituting the numbers. So that is what I'm going to do right now. So if I write that formula again as fast as I can here, if I want to isolate this C value here, I'm first going to isolate this. And the simplest way to do that is to first of all isolate this whole term and then we can start to think about what to do there. Since this whole term is negative and these other terms are positive here, what I'm going to do is I want to put this term on the other side. Probably when you've learned to solve equations, you've learned that if you move a term side to side in an equation, you can do that as long as you switch its sign. Subtracting on one side is like adding on the other. So I'm going to move that entire term over here and make it positive 2ab cosine of c. And then I'm going to move this c squared to the other side. And I'm going to have, I'll still have my a squared plus b squared. But then I'm going to have minus c squared on that side. So I just swapped those two terms and had to switch their signs because I switched the sides for them. Now I still am trying to isolate this. What I need to do then is if it's multiplied by all this stuff, I can just divide both sides by this. If I want to, I can actually write it again and do this uh, and cross it out. Or again, you don't have to write that if you want to keep this uh, a little tidier here. You're going to end up with what we had there, which is cosine of C is a squared plus b squared minus c squared over 2ab. Sometimes you see that formula written for finding the angle and then you know that that'll give you what cosine of C is and you can use the inverse cosine function to find the angle just like we did before or sometimes you see it written like this where it actually says that it's cos inverse of all of that stuff. All right, so you might see either one of those formulas. You might be able to generate either one of those formulas. It's not a bad skill to have to be able to go from there to there. The nice thing about this one is you can just substitute the numbers in and then just punch it all into your calculator and it'll give you directly that all in one step if you want. It's totally fine to do this or to do what we did before, which is sub the numbers and then solve it entirely up to you. But either way, that is using the cosine law to find a missing angle in a triangle if you're given the other three sides.